welcome to our council meeting. Start off with a roll call. Huh? I'm sorry, y'all, I can't see the TV, so I'm just going to orally announce I see Ms. Cooper's present, Mr. Edgecombe's present, Mr. Turner's not present at this time, Mr. Burris, Mr. Marinovich, Dr. Gooey, Mr. Lapine, and Mr. Griffin. I don't see Mr. Hinckley yet today. Uh, we'll just, Mr. Turner just walked in the building. We'll go to our prayer. We take this moment to acknowledge Almighty God and thank Him for our bountiful blessings, especially for the parish's natural resources. We give thanks to God for our brave and courageous men and women in our military who daily risk their lives to protect our precious freedom, and we pray for our world leaders to know how to obtain world peace. We also pray that this government body, comprised of both council and administration, will always serve our parish with honesty, humility, and equality to all. And as this government body gathers here today, we pray for the wisdom to know right from wrong and the courage to do that which is right. Amen. Ken, if you lead us in the pledge. Okay, we're going to go into a recess right now at 117. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting of the Plaquemines, Port Harbor, and Terminal District to order at um, 117. Machine is open for roll call. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you vote too? Yes, Chairman. One thirty, in case somebody's running late, sir. The agenda says the meeting will start at one thirty, in case somebody's running late. It does. It does. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the council business and then we'll start. We want to get it out the way. Yeah. It's okay. Right. Um, okay, I got you. Fort meeting will go into recess. Okay. I'll bring that back. Call the meeting back to order. Call the meeting back to order. We have no executive session. Do we have a status report by the parish president? No. He's not here today. I think he's on a flight with the governor tonight, right now. Okay. Bids and advertisements. Friend is here. Resolution authorizing purchasing agents to advertise for and dispose of surplus vehicles and equipment on an as is, where is basis through public auction conducted by Henderson Auctions. I'll offer and ask for a second. Second. Second by Dr. Gooey. Um, I went through the list, y'all, and looked at it, and most of this equipment, I noticed a lot of it was from the 90s. Uh, the newest piece I found on here was like from 2007. There's some uh, vehicles that mostly just uh, like copying equipments and scanners, calculators, and that type of thing. And it looks like the, a lot of stuff is probably old. A, a good portion of this stuff is flooded, Scott. Flooded equipment, ruined equipment. So it looks like stuff that needs to go to auction. Do we have any comment or question about any of this? Do you want to take an oral, oral call on stuff that's too yeah. bad? Because I can't see anything. Councilmember Griffin? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Hinckley is not present. Councilmember 
Gailey? Yes. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Beer and liquor licenses, do we have any, Mr. Griffin? None. Mr. King, Dr. Gooley? I have none. Mr. Turner, do you have any? I have none. Mr. Edgecombe? Ms. Cooper? Okay, good. Um, building permits. All right, we've got 4A1, LLOG, Exploration Company, LLC, Main Pass Area, Revised, Blocks 22, 23, and 25. Install four inch pipelines and one riser platform. 4A2, LLOG, Exploration Company, LLC, East Black Bay Field. Install four inch flow lines. 4A3, Lobo Operating Incorporated, Breton Sound Area, Block 32. Install four inch flow line and three inch gas lift line. 4A4, Apache Corporation, Southwest Pass Area, maintenance dredge, maintenance dredge, existing slip and work over well. Subsequent maintenance wheel washing events over the next five years following the initial maintenance dredging. 4A5, International Marine Terminals, 18559, Highway 23, Port Sulphur, replaced four damaged tear dolphins. 4A6, Texas Petroleum Investment Company, Delta Duckfield, installed four inch flow line. 4A7, Dune Operating Company, Garden Island Bayfield, pilot cap activity. 4A8, Court, Kurt Penagle, Empire Area, installed 48 inch pipe and existing drainage canal. And I believe we can take these in Globo to be 4A1 through 4A8. I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Mr. Edgecombe. Do we have any comment or question about these? Yeah, I'm just checking the, the one with the borrow pit. It's no longer in here. Did that just fall off, or did? I think we passed that woodland. The woodland pit was done last week, last per last council meeting. I missed the first section. That's why okay. I didn't see it. Okay, thank you. It's a record of vote. Mr. Hinckley's joined us for the meeting. We're voting on 4A1 through 4A8. Mr. Turner, you good, huh? Okay. In Globo. Call it. Council Member Griffin. No. Council Member Hinckley. No. Construction permits. Abstain. Yes. Council Member Lakini. Yes. Council Member Gary. Yes. Council Member Marinovich. Yes. Council Member Bure. Yes. Council Member Turner. Yes. Council Member Edgecombe. Yes. Council Member Cooper. Yes. The record reflected the permits are passed. 4B will be deferred. <laughs> 4A, we have no proclamations. Item 5, do we have any introduction of ordinances and resolutions? Mr. Griffin, do you have any introductions? Yeah, yeah, any yeah, introductions? Uh, Mr. Hinckley? Do I have any here? Oh, here we go with the big stack again. Ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan for the LA-23 winding project, Jefferson Parish, Blackman's Parish, line to Engineers Road and Blackman's Parish and otherwise provide with respect there too. That's all I have for now. Thank you, sir. I have none. Dr. Uh, Gouy. On, on this one, I'd ask my fellow council members to take note of uh, this introduction. Uh, and please respond. There's a blank that needs to be filled out as to whether or not you would like this ordinance to apply to your individual district. An ordinance creating a temporary portable storage container permit required in the parish of Plaquemines or council districts blank, and that's where I need your assistance in filling out whether you want your district to be included. 
authorizing parish president Willie Billy Nungesser upon application to issue a temporary portable storage container permit with options to renew consistent with this ordinance repealing ordinance 0862 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto an ordinance to amend and amended to readopt section 4 of ordinance number 142 the comprehensive zoning ordinance of Clackamas Parish Louisiana as amended and the comprehensive zoning district map, map therein adopted by reference and which is para thereto with reference to application number ZMP 2010-2 dated May 4th 2010 that's it thank you Dr. Gooey in order to amend the five-year capital improvements plan for the Baptiste Collette deepening feasibility study project and otherwise to provide respect thereto. In order to amend the general fund 2013 operating expenditure budget, legal judgments, department line item judgments and damages, Augustus Carroll and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. In order to amend the general fund 2013 operating expenditure budget, public right-of-way maintenance department line item equipment general and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. In ordinance by the Plaquemines Parish Council, as and on behalf of the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority Board of Louisiana, the West Bank Levy District, Plaquemines Parish in Louisiana, Plaquemines Parish Government, to appropriate per perpetual flood protection levy and flood wall easements, temporary work area easements, and temporary road easements in certain portions of lands in Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, to construct the West Bank and vicinity, Mississippi River Levy, Mississippi River and Tributaries Project, Hurricane and Storm Damage Risk Reduction System, Brazilian Peaches, Oak Point to Augusta. WBV-MRL 2.2 baseline stations 443 plus 00 to 522 plus 00 Parish, Louisiana project for Mississippi River Levy, flood and hurricane protection purposes and otherwise to provide respect thereto. A resolution to authorize Plaquemines Parish government to accept a donation of and if necessary to expropriate under authority of LRS 191, a 15 foot servitude for the installation of a sewer line across track, track G3, orphan lot 19, Naren Plantation, Louisiana, otherwise to provide respect there too. I can see that right now. A resolution to authorize the Plaquemines Parish President, born on behalf of the Plaquemines Parish Government, to accept the donation of a UASI CBRNE counterterrorism vehicle from the city of New Orleans, and otherwise to provide respect there too. Put that with the devil. In order to the Plaquemines Parish Council, adopting taxes for the year 2013 to be levied on all lands and property. Subject to taxation assessment of Plaquemines Parish and otherwise provide respect there too. So I'll have this time, Mr. Burris. An ordinance authorizing Parish President William H. Billy Nungesser to negotiate and to execute and accept a certain act of donation of reversionary rights and property known as the Judge Perez Memorial Park, previously conveyed to. Judge Perez Memorial Association, recorded in Conveyance Book 427, Folio 819 of the Conveyance Records of Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance authorizing and directing the parish president, William Billy Nungesser, to prepare and advertise a request for qualifications for professional architectural slash engineering services to plan, design, and make recommendations for the best use of the buildings in the Plaquemines Parish government complex located at 333 F. Edward Abair Boulevard, Belchase, Louisiana, specifically those buildings labeled as numbers 200, 201, 202, 203, formerly the medical complex of the Metropolitan State School, to be used as governmental offices so designated by the Plaquemines Parish Council and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Turner? In order to amend the five-year capital improvement plan by appropriating $500,000 to the Highway 23 four-lane expansion in the Fort Sulphur project and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Oh, thank you, Mr. Turner. I have two. Ms. Kim. Ms. Kim. In ordinance, oh, in ordinance to amend, as amended, readopt Plaquemines Parish Code of Ordinances, Section 2-17, Rules for Transaction of Business Before the Council, Chapter 1, Meetings of the Plaquemines Parish Council Rule 1 and otherwise to provide respect thereto. In ordinance to amend and as amended, readopt the Plaquemines Parish Code of Ordinances, Section 2 18, Rules for Transaction of Business Before the Council, 
as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District. Chapter 1, meetings of the Plaquemines Parish Council as the sole governing authority for the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District. Rule 1, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Thank you. Ms. Cooper, you have something for us? Thank you. In order, in order to amend the five-year capital improvement plan for the East Bank Library project, and otherwise to provide respect there too. A resolution approving the requested variance filed by Gulf Engine and Equipment Company to vary the front yard requirements from 40 to 32 feet for a proposed warehouse office <laughs> building located at 2306 Engineers Road, Bell Chase, Louisiana, all in accordance with application number ZV-2013-3, dated May 14, 2013. That's it. Griffin, we're gonna we're gonna defer seven C right now. Seven C, we can defer for right now. Mr. Edgecombe, we're deferring six A one. Mr. Hankley, six A two. Huh? Six A three, in order to accept the bid of all land services Inc for mineral lease purposes covering parish track 13-3 on property located in Bay Adam Fields and situated in northwest quarter to southeast quarter of section 18, township 20 south, range 28 east, Beers Levy District, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, estimated to contain approximately 40 acres more or less and otherwise to provide respect there too. I'll offer an answer for a second. Second, second by Dr. Gooey. Um, we didn't have any information this last week. Uh, LV Cooley's recommending approval of the bid. And all the bid, bid numbers are underneath. Do we have any comment or question about these? Arthur Henry from Bell Chase. Uh, the public now privileged to the numbers. Could you uh, give us some numbers on the lease? All right, Mr. Henry, let's see what I've got here. Um, okay, I was looking at the second page, got everything on that one too. Okay, we're showing an acreage of 40 acres, price per acre, $283 per acre, town 40 acres, $11,320 of a cash payment, an annual rental of $5,660, and a 25% royalty fee. How long is it? What's the duration of it? Three years? Yeah, it's showing a three-year lease. Okay. Thank you, sir. Do we have a comment or question about it? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Kim. Council Member Griffin? Yes. Council Member Hinckley? Yes. Council Member Lapine? Yes. Council Member Gooey? Yes. Council Member Marinovich? Yes. Council Member Buras? Yes. Council Member Turner? Yes. Council Member Edgecombe? Yes. Council Member Cooper? Yes. And motion passed unanimously. This was quite similar. In order to accept a bit of all land services incorporated for mineral lease purposes, covering parish track 13-6 on property located in Adams Bayfield and situated in the east half of the southwest quarter of the southwest, southwest one quarter of section 13, also the northwest one quarter of section 18, and northwest one quarter of southwest one quarter of section 18, all in township 20 south, range 28 east, Burris Levy District, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, estimated to contain approximately 220 acres more or less and otherwise to provide respect there too. I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Mr. Lapine. Um, before you approach Mr. Henry, I gave you the information on it. It's 220 acres. We're showing $283 per acre, uh, a cash payment of $62,260, and an annual rental of $31,130, and a royalty fee again of 25%. And it was recommended by the uh, 
I mean, an attorney that accepted the, the, the bid. Do we have any comments or questions about this one? Hearing none, take a call. Councilmember Griffin? Yes. Councilmember Hinckley? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gooey? Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Burris? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. And the ordinance passed unanimously. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. 685, Mr. Griffin. Thank you, sir. 685 will be deferred. An ordinance authorizing William Billy Nungas, the parish president, to execute and enter into a lease agreement with Eckerland Incorporated for the releasing of land situated in part of Section 9, Township 14 South, Range 25 East, Western Mississippi River, Plaquemines Parish, otherwise known as the Ferry Batcher property, which is currently used for parish ferry operations, and otherwise to provide respect there too. Dr. Gouy, you're offering? I'll offer us for a second. Second by Mr. Lapine, Dr. Gooey. Yeah, this is the property that we lease uh, for the ferry operation uh, on the Batcher, uh, uh, right adjacent to the ferry, and we've been leasing this for years, and this is just the yearly releasing thing that we go through. I'll answer any questions I can. Oh, one thing I did want to say is on that property, half of the property is used by the ferry, the other half is used by the port. This will uh, allow us for the government to pay for half of that lease, and when we get to the port agenda, I'll have, uh, I'm introducing legislation which will allow for the port to actually lease the other half. Anything to add, Mr. No. Okay. Different subject. I'll talk to you in one second. Do you have any comment or question about this one? So this is going to be a wall. A release agreement. Could you tell me the current? Mr. Henry, step back from the mic just a little bit because I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. This, this okay here? I think that sounds better. Okay. Since this is a, re a release agreement, can you tell me the current lease agreement on here for how much it costs in the parish? Uh, I asked the uh, legal department, they have the contract. And, but we don't have a number. Same thing we've been doing. I don't know what it is. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Gooey, um, none of these um, have the actual agreement attached. To it, um, yeah. he said, what he said, there's, he there's no it. agreement. There's no lease agreement with it. Didn't have the, the agreements attached. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, you, you're correct. Uh, in fact, I'm looking there's at no all uh, six, seven, and eight do not have the uh, agreements okay. attached. I'll defer all three until our next meeting. Let's do that. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Uh, pointing out six a six, six a seven, six a eight will be deferred. Um, Leo, if you would kindly maybe have the, the agreements attached next time we can get these taken care of one way or the other. 6B, Mr. Hinckley, would it go forward with? I couldn't hear him. What did he say? Okay, 6B is withdrawn. 6C, Mr. Hinckley. Do you have a number to put in? You have numbers to put in? In order to amend the five-year capital improvements plan for the playground equipment, Blackie Barris Park project, and otherwise to provide respect there too. Mr. Hinkley, you're offering with changes.
And we punch the numbers in on forty thousand dollars, correct, Mr. Hinckley? On line three, you'll have whereas forty thousand. On line four, after appropriation, forty thousand. Line nine, after appropriation, forty thousand. You're off, and I'll second. Mr. Hinckley. That is correct, sir. Mr. Hinckley, where, where, is, where is it located? About how far down? I'm just, just trying to get an idea of where, where it is. I'm sure other people in the parish are unaware of, of it. Is it on, on barrier or is it off to the back? Is it on barrier itself? Is right down the street from Padua House. Right down the street from Padua House. Any, Any other questions? questions or comments? Hannah, we'll take a vote. Ms. Kim? Councilmember Griffin? Yes. Councilmember Hankley? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gooey? Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Beers? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Thank you. The passed unanimously. Move back to introductions. An order submitted 2013 five year capital improvements plan for the Hurricane Isaac preparation, recovery efforts, and otherwise to provide respect thereto. Mr. Turner, we, 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 Mr. Turner, we, we, def we defer in 6E. You just reintroduced that one, correct? Which one, Mr. Marino? 6E. Yes, sir, I've um, already introduced it. Yes, you said? It falls off. Yeah, that's what you're saying, you're deferring it. Yes. Okay, so 6E is deferred. 6D will also be deferred. 6F, Mr. Edgecombe, you want to defer? With, with, withdraw. Withdraw. It falls off anyway. 6G, Mr. Edgecombe? Defer. It's, withdraw it's deferred. 6A, Mr. Lapine. 6H is deferred. 6I is deferred. 6J, Mr. Edgecombe? Deferred. deferred. Going to move to item 6FF. K, L. You can keep up. K and L. Attorney. An ordinance authorizing and directing the parish president to initiate and implement phase one of the Plaquemines Parish General Aviation Airport project, appropriating $208,095 to the Plaquemines Parish General Aviation Airport project and otherwise to provide respect there too. I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Dr. Gooey. Mr. Mathis, I believe you're here to give us a little explanation on this today. Um, what little I'll understand before Mr. Mathis comes up is that there was an original study made uh, in regards to the fact of whether we needed an airport or not at all. And a determination was made that we do, we could use and would need an airport and it would help with economic development in the parish. The secondary study, excuse me, will actually decide um, an actual site of where we are going to put the airport itself. Stan Mathis, I'm the Economic Development Director for Plaquemines Parish. This is the study that will take us, we've 
done over the last five years, we've done a study of sites in Plaquemines Parish. This site is on the potential piece of property that Plaquemines Port is going to purchase from Citrus Lands down below IMT Coal. It would be on the west side of Highway 23 below Hermitage Road. The cost for this study is $208,000. And what this study does is allow everything to be put in place to make sure that it's financially feasible. There's going to be a, uh, a complete study to make sure there's a feasibility part of it. There is an environmental part of it. This is where we need to be to get to the next level. So the EIS and all will be included in this? That is correct. Do we have any comment or question about this one? Mr. Tony, you have something for us? I do. Any other information on the study? Because all you have is, is just one paragraph here that really doesn't say much. All it says, the first task is, is to assure that the scope of work and timeline and time schedule for the study meet expectations of the RPC and the PPG. This will include a series of meetings with the RP, RPC and PPG staff to, to assure all items to be addressed in the master plan meet the expectations of RPC and PPG. Upon approval by the staff, the scope will be submitted for approval by the full RPC and PPG. So I'm, this really doesn't say anything. If you go to the other pages, it's a breakdown of each line item and what the charge and what, what it's going to be done. This project was started by the Department of Transportation and Development in the state of Louisiana, the FAA, Plaquemines Parish, and the RPC. The RPC, once this study is done, is going to start to try to get us federal funding to go forward with this. And that's why the RPC is mentioned so many times in that paragraph. Well, wherever RPC is mentioned, it's slash Plaquemines Parish Government. And on page one, the very last statement, upon approval by the staff, the scope will be submitted for approval by the full RPC slash PPG. No. The RPC is represented by members of the council. There are members of the council that are members of the Regional Planning Commission, and it will be open to public meeting and public debate with Plaquemines Parish government. Mr. Mathis, one member, a member of, of this council serving on the Regional Planning Board does not constitute this government. Here it says that it will be approved by RPC and Plaquemines Parish government. Having representation on RPC doesn't constitute approval by this government if RPC approves it. Now, that's what's written here, yet your comments were that it's going to be approved by RPC. Now, which do we, which do we hold to? Will it be approved as stated in this, this attachment by this government? Will it come back to this government for approval? Or once we give our blessings here, then it has RPC to come back to the government to be funded. It has to go to both, I would think. It has to. It has to come back to you for a vote. RPC is involved to get federal funding and to help with the state. That's why RPC is involved in this project. It has to go to both, Mr. Turner. No, I understand that. I understand that. But I was going by what Mr. Mathis said, and what he said was that the approval would be by RPC and not the government. And so I just wanted to... If, if I misspoke, please excuse me. It will be handled by this council. RPC is there strictly as an advisor and a conduit to get federal and state funding. Mr. Mathis, on the second to last page, how much of, of that encompasses phase one? On the second to last page? Yes, sir. The timeline. Third to last page, this? That would encompass the project initiation, the site analysis and master plan, and the property research, and those would be items one, two, and three. 
Which line would it end on? Sir? Where does it end? Where does phase one end? One, two, and three. It's the items one, two, and three, which are project initiation, which means starting the site analysis and master plan, evaluating the property, and the property research, 110 days and 90 days. So it would be, if it was approved in quarter one, which it's been pushed back now to quarter three, you're looking at some time right around the first of the year for those first three projects to be completed. And at that step, it would go to the prelimin preliminary engineering and surveying and permitting. So what this $208,000 for is for item ID 1, 2, and 3. And then you said, after that, it goes to permitting. Does that come back before the council? Absolutely. You're the only ones that can issue a permit in Plaquemines Parish. I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Mike. Break on. Any other further comment or question? Thank you. Uh, Benny Roussel, Del Chase. After reviewing the uh, August the 10th, 2009 General Aviation Airport Feasibility Study for Plaquemines Patch, which I've already done once, and looking at uh, the page 37, recommended site development. If you look at the site development map, it shows you that this particular site that they've already done this study for and recommended was selected as the most advantageous site for development. Now, uh, I'm a little concerned about going through another feasibility study when you've already done one. But in light of what happened, it seems that you have permitted a borrow pit on the most advantageous site of the first feasibility study in the report. So once again, I think that we're duplicating efforts and spending public funds in an inappropriate way. I just make that comment to you because it seems to be a pattern here. And if you go back and look at the study, and if you look at what's been done, and you look at the borough pit permit that you just issued three weeks ago, it takes up this site. So you're fast becoming a duplicate effort on many projects, is my point. And uh, I would hope that somebody starts looking at the work that's been done and not moving in directions that are adverse to the parish's interests. Yes. Benny, I, I, that's hard to hear. Um, from what I, I think you said was that the drawing for the airport that they proclaim as the most feasible site overlays borrow pits. Did I hear you correct? You heard me correctly. Okay. As per the August the 10th, 2009 feasibility study for the aviation airport that's already been done right. and analyzed sites. Stan, uh, the, 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 re the stuff that I saw in that report, I, I didn't pick that up because the site that, that was the citrus site is where that airport was and there have been no borrow pit projections for that site. So I don't know if we got the, the right well, map or not. I'd be glad to show you this. Yeah. Stan, which which site was the most favorable? Lake Hermitage site. Lake Hermitage site. Yeah, Stan, uh, Benny's correct. It, the recommended site here says site six. I, when I read this, it was five, which was the Lake Hermitage site, which is the one that was diagonal. Uh, Benny. Oh, no. I think you said 2010, huh? I thought you said 2010. This is 09. 2009. What? what?
at the date on that. Because what you're showing, you're absolutely right. But that's not the report I saw. I saw a subsequent report that had a site that was diagonal. Stan, sir, it seems like we have a lot of questions here from numerous councilmen, people in the audience. Is there any way we could we just create a defer this one again for another two weeks so we can get some further questions asked? That's fine with me. And, and I would certainly ask any of the councilmen or anyone in the audience, Mr. Roussel, to see if we can get your questions answered. Anybody else that might have questions about this before we go ahead and move forward on this? Because there's no sense in voting on if we have some confusion on it. And let, let me say this, the, the, the report is, can be found if you Google Plaquemines Parish General Aviation Airport Feasibility Study. That's the latest one. Yeah, that's the latest one. So, so well, th that goes to the heart of my presentation up here is that how many studies do you have and how many more are you going to do? I understand. It's deferred. 6FF is deferred. Six K would be deferred. Six L, six M will be deferred. Six N will be withdrawn. Six O will be withdrawn. Six P is Q is withdrawn. 6Q is withdrawn. 6R, in order to amend the public health funds, 2013 operating expenditure budget, animal control department, line item supplies, field, and otherwise to provide respect there too, I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Dr. Gooey. Um, what this is, a way to explain to me, it was monies that weren't, it was a PetSmart donation that was received in 2012 and not, you, not spent, and they want to transfer it to 2013 operating expenditure budget, if I'm correct. Any comments or questions? Council, Council Member Griffin? Yes. Council Member Hinckley? Yes. Council Member Lapine? Yes. Council Member Gooey? Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Burris? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Can you pass unanimously? Ms. Cooper, were you withdrawing 6S? 6S is withdrawn. 6T also, Ms. Cooper. 6T will be withdrawn. Mr. Edgecombe? 6U? 6V, you said, will be deferred? 6W will be deferred, 6X will be deferred, 6Y is withdrawn, 6Z, an ordinance authorizing the parish president to solicit proposal and enter into a contract to oversee and manage the mosquito abatement program for Plaquemines Parish and otherwise to provide respect there too. Mr. Edgecombe, you're offering, I'll second, Mr. Edgecombe. I think basically what this is, uh, this is not to, uh, to fire or get rid of any of our people or equipment. Um, I think this is basically just an oversight program to try to do a better management uh, of the mosquito control program. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and the contract has to come back to the council before anything's approved. Okay. That was that was agreed upon. Okay. Does anyone have any comments or questions about this one? Mr. Chairman, I'm Mr. Turner. I'm trying to find where it states in the legislation that this comes back before the council. What I'm reading in ordinance authorizing the parish president is 18 through 21. 18 through 21. Okay, stand by now. Yeah, line 20 and 21. Ready to response and a contract of engagement to the parish council for approval and execution. 
Okay. Okay. Good. Move forward, sir. Anyone else? Hearing no further comment or question, Ms. Kim, if you would. Councilmember Griffin? No. Councilmember Hinckley? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? No. Councilmember Gooey? Yes. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Burris? Yes. Councilmember Turner? No. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. The audience passes, so it will be five to three, with no vote, six to three. Uh, Councilmember Griffin, Councilmember Turner, and Councilmember Lapine voting no. Thank you, ma'am. Six to three. Six eight eight, Mr. Griffin. An ordinance authorizing and directing the parish president to purchase two small excavators to be used in the flood control department and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Mr. Griffin, your offering. Changing on line one, small to medium, and on line eight, small to medium. And with that, you're offering, Mr. Griffin? I'll second, Mr. Griffin. What this is, is Mr. Griffin's wanting to um, purchase two excavators um, to work on the East Bank uh, for ditch cleaning uh, for the area, for drainage. Correct, two excavators. Um, what is um, in, in AA, I don't see an appropriation, so the money's already in the budget. Is that what it is? Don't know. Because CC says the same thing, and there is an, a blank. There's something on here, there's another one on here, the CC, it asks for the money. So, right, and that's my question, is, is CC uh, part the of for the AA? Money. Yes, sir, it's, it's appropriation for the money for uh, AA. It's the same thing, though. Same thing. And, and, and I'm trying to stay on, on topic here. We're talking about excavators. We're not talking about ask. graders to help us out in Lake Hermitage. Excavators. Right. The road grader for um, the Shell Roads has been, um, contract has been signed. It's been ordered. So there, it's uh, up to 120 days before delivery. I heard absolutely not one yes. word you said. And I, and I don't read lips. Road grader has been ordered. I hear you. Uh, Thank you. No other comment or question? Yeah, I, I just, technically, I don't understand the necessity for this legislation. Do y'all have money in the budget to buy this thing already? No, sir. So where's the money coming from? 6 cc. So, so is AA just the mandate that they have to be used on the East Bank, whereas CC says in the parish? I don't see the necessity for double A if you're appropriating the money and it has the same language in double C. Right. Is there any way that we could, could we defer these two and see if we can combine the both of them and do an introduction by the end of the meeting? I, I, don't think I don't think there's a need. I think the only thing you need is, is double C. Double C appropriates the money and tells you to what to use it on. Tells them they can use it in heavy equipment, and if it's in the heavy equipment budget, they can spend it on whatever they want to spend it on. Mr. Griffin. Are you going to withdraw AA? Mr. Griffin. Being that you're going to be offering the change for the amount, also. Just offer the change for the East Bank. Make the same change while you're making the change. Okay, we withdraw an AA. Okay. Six BB, Mr. Griffin, we withdraw it also, correct? Six BB. He's got to do it anyway for the funding. Okay. okay. Please, please.
just make note, y'all, we're on 6 CC right now. The changes we passed on apply to the same, the same ordinance, but they're marked VV, but please disregard the VV part. And I'm going to read an ordinance to amend the general fund 2013 operating expenditure budget, flood control department, line item heavy equipment, and otherwise provide respect there too. Mr. Griffin, your offering with changes. Mr. Griffin, if you point out your changes to us. Okay, on line five, scratch out the word medium, I mean small and put medium. On line six, behind the word ditches, on the east bank and throughout the parish. Where at, Mr. Griffin? I'm sorry. On line six, behind ditches. And on line 18. Let me, let me ask a question real quick. Is it necessary that we mandate the equipment to be used on the East Bank only? That was my choice. Huh? It's not man on the East Bank, but putting the East Bank there to make sure they come over at some point in time. Well, that did. Yeah. On the East Bank and throughout the family. I mean, with Scott, I understand what Mr. Griffin's trying to do here and trying to make sure his, his, his work is done on the East Bank, and I understand that. But would this prohibit us from using the work, the, the equipment on the West Bank if we need it for something? Let me, let me clarify, because there's undoubtedly some misunderstanding. Okay, on line six, where they say ditches, behind the word ditches, add on the east bank and throughout the parish. Not just the east bank, it's throughout the parish. And scratch out the word in, throughout the parish. Uh, down on line 18, first blank is $350,000. And uh, the, first, the second blank is designated from sewage. And down there we have a member, uh, $350,000. Designated for sewage. Sure. Are you offering it that way? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and second. Mr. Griffin? Yes. The floor is yours. I can't open the machine and let them ask questions, though. Huh? You got any questions? Mr. Lapine? Mr. Lott. Excuse me, gentlemen. Okay, Mr. Lapine. We're going to... All right, correct me if I'm wrong. We're going to scratch out small and do medium because of the bucket size of the excavator or we... That's what I want to know, the difference between a small and a medium. About, I know it's price, I'm sure. Okay, do we have any right now? How many? So 
some of these could be used on the East Bank Parish wide. What's that job? Well, uh, well <laughs> thank you. Borrow pits. So that, that, I guess that's my question. Right now, we are not out of an excavator. Right now, this present time, we're not out of an excavator. We don't have no, we have five or six is what you're telling me. Okay. And I, at our disposal, we might have five small and five medium? Okay. But the situation is that you're still under equipment. You still need, you still need additional equipment. That's what it brought us down to. To do the job properly. Yeah. Are these, the size of these machines, are these the machines that we need, uh, say, in the Bell Chase area with the back servitudes? Yes, sir. So this is what these could be used for, or these? Cooper? Oh, I'm sorry. All the districts, matter of fact, Mr. Hinckley. Hello? My understanding, I think one of the big issues, and we've addressed it at the audit committee too, is that uh, Scott's, Scott's group, really, he, he doesn't, he's missing a lot of people. He, and, we've been try, and we've been advertising for these people, and, and we're, we're actually talking to civil service to try to get, see if we can get some more money. But, and so what Scott's doing, Scott's on a rotation system. He's trying to rotate through the parish as best he can with the limited supplies that he's had. So, uh, you know, we, we're on top of this. We're looking at it. We're addressing it. We're, try, we're trying to get more help. You know, if we can get more equipment, more equipment, absolutely. But we, so, but we don't. Let me switch between Mr. Uh, Juno there, so make him happy. Um, <laughs> Call down. the public. I don't need that from you, okay? I don't need it from you, bottom line. Um, at one point in time, as a project falls off, I mean, there's got to be some type of rotation. But, you know, after two years, after a year or so, I mean, you know, look, I'm, I don't raise too much at, at, at any given time, Scott. But at, sooner or later, one of these projects in the district does have to rise to the top. And I think that's what Mr. Griffin's trying to accomplish, by, but his legislation here. But I'm going to be honest with you. I got on the phone last night with several contractors. They're having trouble, the local contractors in this parish, getting work on this levy job because it's all going out of the parish and we know exactly to who. And that's where our parish equipment's going. As I'm sure it's the same questions everybody here at this table has, is why we're we not using the parish equipment on the parish jobs and these supposed contractors that can handle these jobs that are bidding the jobs out 
and subcontracting them out. Why can't we get somebody that can actually do the job? It's actually the, 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 equipment, the, the equipment that the parish has on the levees is uh, jobs that the contractors do not have a contract on. Um, another thing we've got to realize as well, we can get all the equipment we have, we want and need. If we don't have the employees to put on it, again, what, is, what good is the equipment? We advertise and we've been advertising. Wait a minute, if you don't have the employees, what you, who's going to operate this new equipment? That's, what I'm, that's where, I'm, where I'm going. Oh, um, okay. with, we've been advertising for the last two years for operators. Um, one just uh, closed out last week. We got a uh, note from civil service that they're going to have to re-advertise again because they had zero qualifi qualified applicants uh, for the position. With the amount that, uh, that is the starting pay, it's hard to get uh, operators to want to come, you know, come work, especially Scoop. with that much work going I'm on. I'm sorry. And Ms. Coopy, had something for us? I was going to ask the same thing you just said. If, if we have enough manpower now to work the um, 10 to 11 um, excavators and we buy, purchase these these two new excavators, what good is it going to do us if we don't have the manpower to run it? Then we'll have to turn around and, and hire two more people. Right. And I, I also agree with Mr. Hinckley. I don't think I have any kind of jobs that, that are being lacking down there, but I agree with it. We know our levees need to be fixed, but we also need throughout the parish, you know, things taken care of. But if, and I would like to request from you, if you can give us a rundown, maybe on paper, what levy repairs are being done and what parts of the parish. Uh, let's change the, right now on the hatch, the levy right It's not that I want to know which guys are where, but what repairs we're doing to the levees. What's going on with the levees? You know? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop y'all right now. Um, I'll talk to Mr. Griffin. He's agreed to defer this legislation until we can get some, answers, some questions answered on this one also. Mr. Scott, what I'd like for you to do, as soon as those positions are filled, let me know so we can bring this back up again. Thank you. We understand the equipment needs to be, the, the work needs to be done that we're overloaded right now, but we've got some definite questions about this one. 60D, Mr. Griffin, will be withdrawn. Uh, the withdrawn. Withdrawn. Okay, we're going to move to item 6EE, an ordinance to amend the five year capital improvements plan for the 911 radio paging system, fire, and EMS project, and otherwise to provide with respect there too. I'm going to offer and ask for a second. Second by Mr. Burris. Um, from my discussion with the gentleman in EOC, um, this is a, basically an upgrade of what they call Spillman, which is one of the, um, Anthony, you may know more about this than I do. It, Spillman is a, is a criminal computer system that allows uh, law enforcement agencies to go in and run records checks. And what this is is an upgrade. We do have the Spillman system already along with several other systems. And what it's going to do is, is combine or correlate all of these in, into one. And also it's like a, almost like the best way to explain it was like a computer program update. And uh, I believe this is right at $200,000. I would ask for your support for this. Do we have any comment or question? The... Um On the upgrade, is, is it worth, this is $200,000, right? For this, yes, sir. For this upgrade. What's lacking in the system that we have? If I understand Mr. Beerus correctly, you can do criminal checks with it. But our 911 system, is that what we really need? Do we really need a $200,000 uh, adjust? What it is, is it? it's an upgrade. It was explained to me as an upgrade in the system. It's new things in the system. It's things that have been added to the federal and state system so we can, so we can, I don't know how to say, communicate, you know, and better with them and, and, and mesh, mesh new things into the system. Also, we just combined our 911 parish system with our 911 sheriff's office system, and this will also combine 
those programs together also the best way I understand this. So it'll match better. And is this a one-time fee, or will there be no, an annual? No, no, this is a one-time. Will, will there be an annual maintenance fee? Sir? Will there be an annual maintenance oh, fee? Oh, you got me on that one. I mean, when you buy the software, are we making, is this a one-time upgrade? Because I know we just spent quite a bit of money upgrading the 911 system, I want to say within the last two years. And now another $200,000, and I'm just wondering what's lacking in our system. I didn't see or hear anything about any kind of annual upgrades. This is a, like a one-time upgrade. Ms. Cooper? Why isn't some of this cost coming out of the fire district also? Because I don't think this is just fire and EMS. This is also sheriff's department also. This is all 911 systems together. Oh, okay. So it said fire on it, so. Mr. Lott, you said the sheriff's office will be using it 95% of the time? Spielman is normally used when it, you know, for instance, you know, you're the deputy and you pull me over on the side of the road and I hand you my driver's license and you run and say, you're running me for record checks, uh, criminal background checks, that type of thing. I just thought we had systems like that in place. We do already. have some in place, but this is an upgrade, it's a newer upgraded system to mesh our systems together and also to upgrade to the newer systems in, in, in correlation with the federal and state systems that have been upgraded also. And again, do we know if this is a one-time fee or it's not? It's a one-time fee. There will not be an annual maintenance fee. Not that I, I've noted in here at all. I haven't seen anything like that at all. Uh, yeah, right here. Annual maintenance fee. Uh, 5000 almost 5500 um, for the hip link paging. Another 1080 another 2000 another 2000 These are annual fees. And so do we have an annual fee right now? The system that we purchase, it's ours. I'm making an assumption there. It's on the, the very first page. Right where your hand is near the bottom, second half, in bold. Right. I think this is, no, I, it's a, this is showing an estimated second year maintenance. Wait a minute, let me just run these numbers real quick. Right, but then there's an annual fee. It is, that is exactly $200,000. No, I just added him, Scott. Plus the twelve thousand one forty-five. I just added him. It comes up to two, twelve two hundred thousand. Exactly. It's a second. You you were right. It's a second year. It's a second year updating on this. A second year maintenance. And these two numbers added together come up to exactly two hundred thousand dollars. Do we have an annual maintenance fee on our system right now? Because it looks like this is going to be a two-year renewal. Are they going to hit us again? I'm just looking at the total cost. If we're not... I just want to make sure that we, we can justify the additional, the $200,000 expense. Are, are we lacking... Let's pass, it, let's pass over this item real quick. Yes, please. Mr. six gg A resolution authorizing special counsel Attorney J. Kendall Rathburn and the law firm of Dwight Camber and Suffer was designated to send notices to the owners and operators of and to take action to preserve and to enforce the council's rights and interests regarding permit issues relating to properties, PTRW Trailer Park, also known as Liberty Lane Trailer Park, and otherwise to provide respect there to Ms. Lapina offering. Second, Mr. Hinckley, very loudly. Go ahead, Mr. Lapina. Uh, I'll uh, make note to Mr. Rathburn to give us a description of what we're going to do here. Thank you, Mr. Lapine. Um, this, is, this provides that there, there are some issues with this particular trailer park that uh, Councilman Lapine has been made aware of, and this provides that our law firm will be able to notify the trailer park of those issues. That's as far as it goes. Give them a notice of, of corrective action that needs to be taken. We, we won't be taking any other uh, legal steps with regards to that pursuant to this resolution. It just stops at grant giving them notices. So that's the sum and substance of 
of what this provides for. Ms. Mr. Hinckley, I spoke to you about this in the past, and Ms. Lapine, if either one of y'all want to answer, I think we've had some numerous complaints from fire, EMS, and special law enforcement about this particular uh, area, and we just want to kind of look into this a little bit before we renew any permits, is that correct? Correct. Uh, the permit was actually up for today. I deferred it again. We do have some issues and concerns. Um, we are investigating, so that's why it was deferred again. And this is really, as Mr. Rathburn explained, to um, have Dwight Cambry um, take over for us. Okay? Any questions? Just where is this trailer park located? Right this next is right next to Velestras. Oh. Where Velestras is, is right on the south side right here. Okay. Dr. Gui, you have something for us? Yeah, I just, I have a, a, a question about the parish attorney's office. Um, I know we have abatement. We have things that, that are done all, all, for all of us in regards to properties in our, in our districts. And I'd like to know what is the response from the parish attorney's office as to why this can't be done in an expeditious manner through your office rather than having to go outside. I think that the parish attorney's office can handle it. I think they've addressed some of the issues already that have been complied with. I know there were some issues with regarding some of the, the trailers not having skirts put on them, and that was done. Um, I think what needs to be done, and I, I, I had a brief conversation with Councilman Lapine, um, if we could just have a, a meeting with regarding his specific concerns, we can get it done. And, uh, and, and my, my next question is, if it were turned over to the parish attorney's office, would it be done in a week, a month, six months, a year, as opposed to using an outside firm that would be able to get on it right away? Because I know of your workload, I, I understand that. And I'd just like to know if there's no question that the parish attorney's office can't handle this, but can you handle it today? Or is your workload such that it goes on the list? And I think that's a very fair question to ask. It, it, it is a fair question, and I appreciate that, Dr. Gooey, um, because we are we do have a lot of things going on or, and it's constantly changing. And, and, and knowing uh, Mr. Rathborn and his law firm, we don't have any problem with them helping us or assisting us in any, any which way. But I would like to call everybody's attention to the fact that the legal department took out of their budget $100,000 to give it to uh, our, our, our health department, department. Our, another department who handles this particular thing. So they're up to gear to help us with that. So again, I think we have the, the ability to do it. As far as you know, what exactly we're going to be doing as it comes up, you know, that's going to determine how long it takes. I've got one. I've got one question. I've got. I just got one question. Maybe Mr. Lapine or Mr. Hinckley can answer for me if they if they would know the answer. Could either you gentlemen tell me the last time this trailer park has been fully licensed? If you know, permitted, completely like, permitted and licensed, legally as licensed. Of the last conversation I had with the permit office, they haven't had a permit since 2009. I think that would give us an obvious answer to your question, Dr. Gooley. Well, um, okay. I think Ms. Cooper wants something. Sorry, Ms. Cooper yeah. wants to I'm sorry, Ms. Cooper, go ahead. It's hard to understand what y'all saying down there, but um, I, I heard one violation that uh, somebody mentioned, but can you give this council a report or a list of violations that y'all are looking into? I don't know if y'all said that or... We are compiling a list. I have pictures in my briefcase, if you'd like to see, from the health department. I have a fire department report, if you'd like to see. I haven't made it to you yet because we are still working on the investigation. Okay, but when I have everything compiled, I will bring it to everyone here. This is, I guess, just to um, get Ken on board so we can get them behind us. And so we, if we have to send a notice, we'll be able to do that. And I'm sure the parish attorney would have a problem working with Mr. Rathburn on this, correct? We'll, we'll do whatever y'all instruct us to do. Thank you. Do you have any comments or questions about this one? Mr. Henry? No, I can't hear. 
Yeah, I have a question, and it's basically not a question, but it's a comment. And, uh, you know, I lived in Belgium all my life, and I've seen this trailer park have transformed. And I talked to some people in that trailer park, but it, it had become basically a Latino community now. So when we go in there and push in our mic, uh, let's, let, let, let's kind of be receptive to those people in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. Any other comment or question? Councilmember Griffin? Yes. Councilmember Hinckley? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gooey? Yep. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Buras? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Uh, is present. not present. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. And the ordinance passes 8 to 0. Councilmember Turner absent. HH deferred. 6HH will be deferred. A resolution stating Plaquemines Parish Council's endorsement of Chevron R. Knight Company, LLC, to participate in the benefits of the Louisiana Enterprise Zone Program. Mr. Beers, your offering? Yes, our offering is filed. I'll second. Mr. Beers? Thank you. Uh, Chevron R. Knight is in the process of about a $10 million expansion and upgrade in their plant. Um, the, the expansion uh, is estimated to create uh, approximately five new jobs, bringing uh, with it the construction phase about 20 construction type jobs um, for a total of about nearly 400 jobs in the plant. Um, the uh, investment that they're making in the upgrades is about $10 million and their estimated payroll is about $40 million. So I would uh, ask for the council's support and allowing them to participate in this program. Any questions at the table? Comments from our audience? Councilmember Griffin? Yes. Councilmember Hankley? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gooey? Yes. Councilmember Buras? Yes. Councilmember Turner's absent? Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? And Councilmember Marinovich is also not present. The ordinance passes 7 to 0 with District 6 and District 8 not present. Okay, 6JJ will be deferred. We're going to move back to 6EE. Okay, we've got an ordinance to amend a five year capital improvements plan for 911 radio paging system, fire and EMS project, and otherwise revive with respect there too. We have a second on already, I know. Okay, we have a second on it. Okay. Mr. Berg, Mr. Turner, we had some questions about that. Did you get your questions answered, sir? Yes, sir, I'm fine. I think there was some question about is there, an, is there going to be a man, annual fee and you might have a little more information for right, us. Right, we want to understand the total cost of what we're getting. And right. There is an annual fee, uh, roughly $6,000 to twelve, and so it won't just end after two years. And they're calling it a maintenance fee. Just want to know the full cost of the of the. I understand. And so there is an annual fee. Um, he's saying an advantage is that uh, because of it being a computer-based system, that they, they would be able to track the emergency vehicles a lot faster and better and be able that would give them a better response um, to the refineries or just emergencies. Okay. So um, I'm going to support it. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your patience. Any other comments or questions? Just one, uh, and uh, I don't know, Scott, maybe, a, Scott, maybe, maybe you can answer, maybe a Byron or Janice can answer. I know that uh, we have had some extensive GIS work done to map out where things are. This, does this do some of the same thing in mapping out fire hydrants? Or, this has nothing to do with the GIS. I think that's important that the public understands we're not duplicating any effort here. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Count, Council Member Griffin? Yes. Council Member Hinckley? Yes. Council Member Lapine? Councilmember Gooey? Yep. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Buras? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. And the ordinance passes 9 0. 6 JJ will be deferred. What happened to 8 and 9? 
six KK will be deferred. Will you do that one now? Uh, at least uh, speak on, on behalf of it. Discussion on In order to submit the general fund 2013 operating expenditure budget, road maintenance department, line item equipment, tractors and mowers, and otherwise provide respect thereto, I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Mr. Edgecombe. Mr. Lott, go right ahead. What this is, is um, for some additional 15 foot tractors. We have enough 15 foot tractors for the amount of people that we have at this present time. We are advertising, we, I think we're two or three guys short that we're advertising for. Um, the only thing we have a problem is with when we have a tractor that goes down. We had Kurt. four tractors down um, for four to six weeks. So when a tractor goes down, we don't have a, a backup tractor to put them on. So uh, with the, the grass season that we're in right now, with the rain and the, the sunshine, it's, it's just growing crazy. And when we have a track, four tractors down for uh, four to six weeks, we do get behind. So, you know. Can I ask my same foolish question from before? Do we have people to operate this equipment? We, we have enough tractors for the operators that we have now. It's just when the tractors go down, we don't have nothing to put them on. And like I said, we, we, have, we had four to six of them down for four to six weeks. How many are we looking to purchase for this three hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Four, four uh, tractors and four fifteen-foot uh, push hogs. Four tractors and four. Four bush hogs. The, the, okay. the, 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 the mowers on the back. And I'll be acting. Okay, we are we, we offering this and with changes. Um, I'm noticing on line four, we're gonna the three hundred fifty thousand dollars gonna come from the general fund, unreserved, undesignated fund. Line five listed as balance, and also on line nine, we're adding the words general fund. Line ten, adding the words unreserved, undesignated fund balance, striking the words to the. And with that, I'll, I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Mr. Edgecombe. Do we have any further comment or question about this one? I got a question. What's the delivery time? The equipment that you talked about earlier, you gave us a, a 90-day, 120-day delivery time. What's the delivery time on this equipment? I have no idea. We have to find out. There's a couple con uh, companies, vendors that are uh, on state bid. We'll see. Hopefully, we'll go with the one that has the quickest delivery time. Because if we're looking at the 60 to the 90 days, of you know, the bulk of the summer is going to be, it's going to be over with. I apologize if I didn't hear you, but the 350,000 will buy a four, four tractors, four game bush tractors or the, the bush hog? Both, the tractors and the bush hogs. Okay. Will we have anybody to drive them? We're advertising at this present time. We don't have anybody for them right now, but we're advertising. But the biggest thing is when the ones that we have go down, we don't have nothing to put them on. Okay. Can I ask a special request? If the tractor by the Peabody's property is not used, um, if I could get a key one day, I wouldn't mind going out and work and cut grass so I don't have to get a complaint to my constituents. Wouldn't mind at all. No just, problem. I've been asking, just give me a key and I'll drive the tractor. No problem. Thank you. Gentlemen, you all feel comfortable with this one today? Go ahead and go with me. Councilmember Griffin, yes. Councilmember Hankley, yes. Councilmember Lapine, yes. Councilmember Gooey, yes. Councilmember Marinovich, yes. Councilmember Burris, yes. Councilmember Turner, yes. Councilmember Edgecombe, yes. Councilmember Cooper, yes. and the ordinance passes 9-0, eight zero, nine zero. Sorry. Six. So Thank you. JJ will be deferred. Mr. Turner, 6LL. Uh, 
I'll offer it for discussion. An ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan for the living quarters for a fire station project and otherwise to provide respect there to Mr. Turner, your offering. Yes, discussion. sir, for discussion. I'll second. Mr. Turner, go ahead. Do we have anyone in the audience or administration who can tell us um, what this is for and what's the total cost? Give us some information. How many people we plan to house? We're talking an additional, just for the audience, this is for an additional $150,000 for living quarters to the fire station. There's $150,000 presently in the budget, which isn't enough based on the estimates that we had. We're trying to get the firemen in Port Sulphur out of the trailers and into the fire station. It's to take the big room that's up there now and to make living quarters for the paid firefighters. So this is for the fire station in Port Sulphur? Yes, sir. Not the one that's being built in Murder Grove? This no, is sir. Port Sulphur? This is for the Port Sulphur fire station where the firemen are in the trailer presently. It's to get them out of the trailer and get them inside the fire station. Excuse me one second. Ms. Ms. Cooper, I just want to clarify, so did you say this would not be enough money to $150,000? No, there, there's presently $150,000 in the budget. We needed to increase it by one hundred and fifty. dollars The total project... This is the th increase. This is the increase. Okay, I'm sorry. Ms. Cooper? Well, first let me say that I think that this ought to be a parish-wide effort because our EMS is still in old mildew trailers also in Venice. And yes, we have blue tarps on the roofs and they need a, a permanent place uh, quarters. And also, let me ask you this, why is this coming out? Oh, okay, it's coming out of the firefighting general Yes, ma'am. Okay, I didn't see that. You good, Ms. Cooper? No, uh, no, are we gonna do that for our other firemen, like the Venice area, or do you have some kind of plans to get those? Um, Presently, ma'am, and, and this is the project for Port Sulphur. We still do not have a project for Woodlawn or for Bell Chase where they're in trailers. Um, we have the main station being built to get them out of that trailer, but there is four locations. The next two projects are the substation on Engineers Road and the O'Brien station to get them out of trailers. We're trying to get all the firemen out of the trailers. We're taking them project at a time. I think she was asking about uh, her area in District 9, um, Mr. Robert Show, if you could maybe the, give us some... The firemen are in the station. I know she's asking me about EMS, but I can't speak for EMS. I'm talking for fire. Right, okay. Good, Ms. Cooper. Mr. Turner, do you want to run with this or not? You want to do it? And Mr. Robichaud, so we're just going to be putting petitions inside the current building, or are we adding on to it? Because this is at the cost of $150,000. We, we're, we're not adding on to the building at all. Okay. That big center room, we're dividing that room up and putting a bunk room, a bathroom, a kitchen a dining area, and a day room, all in that one space. And, and that's what's needed to house the firemen in it now. I just can't, I just can't see that costing $150,000 for a structure that we already have, and we're pretty much just partitioning, unless I'm missing something. Okay. Okay. And I might be, but, but and, and we're, up And personally, I agree with you. That's why we originally had 150 in the you budget. Stated, you stated a kitchen, a bathroom, Shower, yes, sir. All right, doesn't the building already have a kitchen and a bath bathroom in it? Presently, the only bathroom with a shower in it on the fire side is downstairs. Mr. Robichaud, excuse me one second. Since Mr. Uh, Turner brought this up for discussion only, is there any way you could get the information to him and to the rest of us? I, I have the plans. I'll be glad to share it could, with if him. If you could share that with us, and I think we can go ahead and go probably go with this next meeting. Okay. And with that, we'll defer it, Mr. Turner? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 6 L L is deferred. 6MM, an ordinance authorizing the parish president, William H. Dungas, to accept on behalf of the Plaquemines Parish Government donations of $1,500 from Chevron and $6,000 from Phillips 66 for use by the Recreation Department. I'll offer an ask for a second. Second by Mr. Burris. Um, there seems to be just $7,500 in donations from two of the companies uh, giving us charitable donations for the Recreation Department. I see no downside to this whatsoever. Do we have any comments or questions about this? Mr. Chairman, I'll be present but not voting. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Do you have any comments or questions? That's on MM, correct? MM, right. Yeah. I'm going to follow with the donation. I would, uh, would it, where is it going to be used in the recreation department? It's used parish wide in recreation. It doesn't, um, no designation basketball, baseball, football, soccer. So if there's a shortfall or a need, that money is used. So y'all haven't figured out where you may need, use it at? 
it's a donation, so we use the budgetary funds that we have, and the donation, if it's still there, we'll utilize that at that same time. But it, in the legislation from Chevron, it doesn't say basketball, it doesn't say baseball, it says in the recreation department as a whole. So that's how we use it in the recreation parish-wide. I, I, I know that. The deal is, basketball always get low ball here, man. All the other sports get high acclaim with the money. Basketball don't get anything. We, we, we got to stop that. Judy, have any comment or question about this matter? Now I'm going to call a voice vote. Uh, I will need to take note that Mr. Lapine and Mr. Turner will be present and not voting. Ms. Kim, if you would. Councilmember Griffin. Councilmember Hinckley. Yes. Council, Councilmember Gooey. Yes. Councilmember Marinovich. Yes. Councilmember Buras. Yes. Councilmember Agecombe. Yes. Councilmember Cooper. And the ordinance passes 7-0. An ordinance to amend the general fund to this six in in. I'm sorry. An ordinance to amend the general fund 2013 operating expenditure budget, coastal zone management department line item rental, lease storage space, and otherwise to provide respect thereto. I'll offer and ask for a second. Second, second by Dr. Gooey. Um, for one to stand, um, just, just basically what this is, is funds are needed to pay for storage fees to store and house boats, boats for the Plaquemines Parish government. That is used for transportation of the residents until the Lake Hermitage Bridge construction project is completed. And this looks to be a six month uh, lease, uh, which should be $1,000 a month at $6,000. Do we have any comment or question about this? Mr. Turner? I'm assuming this is for the bridge work. Is that correct, Mr. No, it's Foster? not. It's it, this is for. He's shaking his um, head, saying yes. It's for it's leases, rentals. It's 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 in regard to the bridge project. But the way I'm reading this, if I'm reading this correctly, it's showing rental and lease storage space for the boats that are actually bringing the people back and forth across the canal. I'm assuming is being done. In in, a, in addition to the parking facility at the marina, so the people can park their cars, their trailers, whatever they need, and that the boat can be stored there. That's what, that's what, it's $1,000 a month. The, the, the number was originated from, that's what they charge for the, the oil and gas companies that actually put their boats there. That's the same price. That's where that number came up from. So but it is it, for the bridge and not but, for the bridge. But it's designed for the transportation of the people on Lake Hermitage. No, I, that I understand boat. that. I understand that. And I guess my question is, do we anticipate this lasting six months? because the bridge was supposed to be um, very, very short term as far as the repairs, and so I'm, I'm not following this six months. Leo, if, if, I, if it's I, gonna I, be a shorter, shorter period of time, maybe I can ask that question. It, well, I, I think we, they asked the $6,000, assuming, you know, but again, it's gonna be, a, it's set up as $1,000 a month, so if the bridge is finished in three months, it'll only be $3,000. Okay. So it, it, it is month by month yes, as, sir. as yes, needed. Yes, and sir. We're just budgeting up to six yes, months. Yes, sir. I just didn't want to be locked into a contract for six months no. when we know the no, project no. isn't expected no. to last that long. No, sir. It's going to be month to month. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment or question? Ms. Kim, if you would. Councilmember Griffin. Councilmember Hinckley. Yes. Councilmember Lapine. Yes. Councilmember Gooey. Yes. Councilmember Marinovich. Yes. Councilmember Buras. Yes. Councilmember Turner. Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe. Yes. And Councilmember Cooper. Yes. And the ordinance passes 9-0. 600, an ordinance to provide for reestablishment of regional planning commission to include the parish of Tangipahoa, jointly with the parish of Jefferson, Orleans, Plaquemines, St. Bernard, and St. Tammany. I'll offer and ask for a second. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hinckley. Uh, basically what this is, the Regional Planning Commission right now um, is Jefferson, Orleans, Plaquemines, St. Bernard, and St. Tammany. Uh, Tangipahoa was invited to join the RPC uh, along with the other parishes. The RPC accepted them, but I believe they have to have our approval also. Then also the other parishes, and that's what this legislation will do. I'd ask for your support on that. Any comment or questions? Council Member Griffin. Councilmember Hinckley? Yes. Council, Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gooey? Yes. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Buras? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. And Councilmember Cooper? Yes. The ordinance passes 9 0. 
6PP, a resolution to amend and is amended, readopt resolution number 09-194 to provide for meals reimbursement in exceptional travel circumstances and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Mr. Griffin. Uh, what this does, it seems that, I don't know what the, the numbers are at this time, but, um, but this what, what this does is actually uh, increase the per diem amount for our lunches and dinners. Uh, I've had to make quite a few trips myself, and most of these are running quite more than even these amounts. Um, for everybody's knowledge, it's showing lunch and dinner at $37 per day. Um, for travel day, full days, breakfast, lunch, and dinner at $46 a day. The travel day is showing at $22 per day. And they have a list of cities here. Um, I'm not going to read them all off, but um, some of them are listed at lunch at 17 dinner at 31 at, for a total of 60 and some of the cities listed at $19, dinner at 33 for a total of $65. Um, the, B, the B ones, which are a little higher, uh, with more, the more expensive cities that we do go to, um, work on some of the things that we do, do work. Uh, um, Mr. Griffin went recently to Washington. Uh, me and Mr. Beers had recently worked on a Bigger Waters Act. Uh, Mr. Turner's shown us, Mr. Edgecombe, I've seen all of us in Washington at various times. It's extremely expensive to eat up here and all, and they're showing that number at $65 a day, which I promise you very, very barely covers a dinner unless you're eating at McDonald's. So I would certainly ask everyone to help us out on this one. And these are state regulated, Ms. Kim? Thank you. Do we ha have any comment or question about these? All right, Ms. Kim? Councilmember Griffin? Yeah. Councilmember Hankley? Yeah. Councilmember Lapine? Yeah. Councilmember Gooey? Yeah. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Burris? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. And the resolution passes 9 0. 6 QQ will be deferred. Mr. Edgecombe, 6 RR. 6 RR will be deferred. 6 SS will be deferred. TT. 6TT will be deferred. Mr. Griffin, you, you. 6UU will be deferred. Ms. Lapine, 6. You want to defer until next time, then? Oh, Julie, let me ask you to read. Okay. A resolution approving the acceptance of a capital outlay act appropriation by the state of Louisiana for the Bell Chase Parks Planning and Construction FPNC project number 50-J38-12-03 in the amount of $100,000 and authorizing Parish President William Billy Nungesser to sign all documents and act on behalf of Plaquemines Parish and all matters pertaining to this project and otherwise to provide respect there too. Mr. Lapine, your offering? Yes. I'll second, Mr. Lapine. You said this was a grant, sir? This is a grant and... Um but Mr. Benny Puckett was supposed to be here. This is something that the state put aside in the capital outlay fund. So we have to um, send an appropriation to them and um, they will in turn send it to us. So this is just a grant that's coming from the state already approved. Um, and Mr. Puckett would have more information if you need any more information, but I think that's basically what it is. So basically, this is, we're going to put up the upfront money. We, we, we will no, we're going to put no upfront money. They're going to come up with they all come up with the hundred thousand dollars. I understand. Dedicated for the Plaquemines Park. It's dedicated for this Plaquemines Park. Thank you, Mr. In District Three. Mr. Mr. Turner. Does that make it a state park? Will it have to be a no, state it, park? No, it's it's in District Three. It's designated for District Three parks and playgrounds. And and which park you're looking at utilizing this for? I'm sorry. I didn't. Which park are you looking to utilize this for? It's for a walking track that we plan on building on the government property by the Pivach property housing off of Avenue A in, the, in my district, District 3. It doesn't exist yet. It does. Okay. Right. This is money to put aside to work on. Okay. I'm good. Any other comment or question? You know what I'm going to ask you. You going to put gold in the park or what? They're going to have a theater for music. I don't care about music right now. We, we need somewhere for kids to rec really recreate themselves. Right, right now, it's only designed for a walking track. 
For $100,000. Come on, man. State money. State money. For what? The, the walking track will be done in-house. Man, we got to stop dissing Belgians, guys. You got to put a goal somewhere up in here, man. Come on. Come on now. And I'm going to hold you guys to it. And you know I am. You got it, Mr. Henry. Anyone else? Comments or questions? Ms. Kim? Councilmember Griffin? Yes. Councilmember Hinckley? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gooey? Yep. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Buras? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Yes. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? The resolution passes 9-0. Mr. Chairman, I have an introduction. Okay, I'm going to move back to um, item six, an ordinance authorizing William Billy Nungesser Parish President to execute and enter into a lease agreement with Equiland Incorporated for the releasing of land situated part of Section 9, Township 14 South, Range 25 East, west of the Mississippi River, Plaquemines Parish, otherwise known as the Ferry Batch of Property, which is currently used for parish ferry operation, otherwise provide respect there too. Dr. Gouy, you're offering? Yeah. At the request of the parish attorney's I'll office, uh, I am offering this. I'll second. Dr. Gooey? Yes. Uh, actually, items 6, 7, and 8, uh, there was uh, some questions about the lease. And what I'd like for uh, either uh, Mr. Arteaga or uh, Mr. Palazzo is to answer any questions relative to that lease agreement to see if we can satisfy any questions that council members have so we can move on this. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over uh, to the parish attorney's office I'm to answer questions. Any questions? I'm just going to take quick note. Um, probably the first question everybody's going to ask is, obviously, how much? Um, we're showing an annual rate here of $17,217. That's, cor that's it's correct. It's a primary term of two years. That's correct. And this is the same terms and conditions as it was previously. Exactly. And that's for, that's for the, the, the ferry batcher. So you're looking at approximately $8,606 a year. Let's say that again, I'm sorry. $8,606 a year. No, no, it's an annual rate of $17,217. I'm reading $17,217 for a two year rate, which if you break that down, comes to $8,606. No. This is a one year rate or a two year rate? It's, it's, per, it's per year, 17000 Okay, so $17,217 a year per year for two years. It's a yes, two year contract. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. Mr. Chairman, if you look, look at line Still three. Okay, what it is, I was asking the question whether it was, this was split rate or not, but it's not. It's going to be $17,217 per year, and this is going to be a two year contract. Is that correct, Mr. Palazzo? That's, that is correct. And this is, the, again, the same terms and conditions as the previous lease. Nothing's been changed. Mr. Fennison? Yes, I have a question. We, we share that lease, or we do with the ferry department for the Port Authority boats. Is that one half? In other words, it's $17,000 per year. Currently, the half is $8,600 per year. If, if this is accepted, would our portion be $17,000 per year also? I don't, I don't believe so. Okay, no. it'll still be split. Okay. Uh, Thank the you, way, Leo. The way this one is written and the mirror with the port, uh, the lease is $17,000, but it also states in there that one half will be paid by the port and half will be paid by parish government, okay. as it always has been. Thank you, Dr. Gordon. Let's move back to the 8606 number. Yes, um, Benny Roussel and Bell Chase. After watching uh, this lease agreement evolve a couple of years ago after occupying the property for over 50 years, the question has been raised at the initial leasing of the property, was there any idea of expropriating the property since you'll be using it for many, many more years to come instead of leasing it. And uh, 
that idea wasn't given very much consideration on the initial discussion of the original lease a couple of years ago. Now we're back here renewing the lease, and this is, uh, I guess, applicable to the ferry and the water line, which you're going to reduce and which you're going to renew as well. So it seems to me that if it's in the parish's best interest to continue running the Bell Chase Ferry and continuing to provide water to the community, that a permanent solution should be sought after for this right of way or for this property that you decided to lease a couple of years ago after occupying for 50 years. And I've had a concern since the original lease when you had it for 50 years and decided to start paying rent for it. But now I have a more concern that it ought to be a permanent solution and you ought to move towards expropriation or something to that effect purchase because it doesn't seem to want to end on the lease situation. And this has been going on for how long, you think? Well, the parish has occupied the ferry and the water line property for 50 years. Two years ago, you were presented with a lease, to lease the same property that you've been occupying for 50 years, and you bought into it and you leased it, which to, in my mind had some legal ramifications for the parish, and you have a legal department that surely should be able to look into this issue. Now, I'm a little bit familiar with how this came about, but without delaying the council meeting any further, if you're going to continue to renew the leases, there should be an effort by this parish to put a permanent solution in place. And I think all of you are aware of this, that you're not going to stop running ferries, and you're not going to stop taking water out of the river. So we're right back here again two years later, renewing the lease, which is a concern to me. One thing, has, uh, has an expropriation procedure or uh, other like ever been considered in the years past by any past councils or past administrations? Was it ever put on the table? Uh, the parish position during my administration and past administrations were that we owned it by possession after 50 years and there was no need to go forward with any expropriation. And there was never a demand to lease it because the current owner didn't own it at the time. Just recent memory when the owners purchased an estate. Subject to what is there now in my mind, and I'm not going to sit up here and argue the legal merits of it, but that property was occupied by the ferries and the water line many, many years before the current owner purchased the estate. And I'll leave it at that and ask your legal department to do the rest. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I'll, I'll respond. Um, when this first came up, the fee was, that came up during this administration. And I strongly opposed it. And I brought up the issue about us expropriating the land at that time. Uh, because we were already utilizing the property, we already had, um, it was functioning and we were, we were utilizing it. There was no need for us to lease it. I felt the land over was getting over on us and I stated so. And if you look at, this one is for 17000 the next one is for 60000 and there's one for 12000 All we're doing is we're just taking care of this landowner for no reason when you've got a park in Ironton where they want to make you move playground equipment. And so we're going to pay these people $17,000 a year. If we continue to do this, shame on us. We should immediately begin the expropriating process. This is a disgrace. I said it when it first came up, and for the record, I'm saying it again. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. This is shameful. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that, that was a, a good discussion. What, what I would like to do and get some, some answers to some of the questions uh, for uh, uh, number six, which happened, that, that constitutes the um, ferry property and the port property, uh, I'll defer on that one. But uh, I, on number six and number seven, 
those, it, that's a totally different issue, and I'd like to move on those and make sure we answer any questions on. Uh, so I'd like to move to number, defer number six, and let's move to number okay. seven. Number yes. seven is an ordinance authorizing William Billy Nungas, the parish president, to execute and enter into a lease agreement with First Equity Incorporated for the releasing of Square 38 of Bell Chase Town Site, Bell Chase, Louisiana, which is to be used for parking in the Plaquemines Parish Annex and a place in one double wide trailer, and otherwise we'll have respect there too. Dr. Gouy, you yeah, offer? I'll you? offer that, yes. We have a second. Second by Mr. Burris, Dr. Gouy. Yeah, this is um, uh, this is a different situation than the, the previous ordinance. Uh, this is uh, an area uh, right by the annex building, um, Main Street and Avenue G. There's a, a trailer on that property now, uh, used utilized by the sheriff's office or the DA's office. I'm not sure, and um, and the parking. We've been leasing this. Uh, if it ever happens that the F. Edward A. Bear property is developed. We'll no longer need this, but at, at this time we do. You know the traffic and what it's like around the annex building during the middle of the day. I'll answer any questions I can. Uh, <laughs> I have no questions. Ms. Cam, if you would. Councilmember Griffin. Councilmember Hankley? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gooey? Yes. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember yes. Burris? Yes. Councilmember Turner? No. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. And the ordinance passes eight to one. Number eight, an or ordinance authorizing William Billy Nungas, the parish president, to execute and enter into a lease agreement with First Equity Incorporated Equiland and Inc for the releasing of land situated in Port of Section 9, Township 14 South, Range 25 East, west of the Mississippi River, Plaquemines Parish, otherwise known as a railroad spur, which is currently fenced by the parish and used for parking by parish and 25th Judicial District Court <coughs> officials and otherwise provide respect there too. Dr. Gouy, are you offering? I offer, ask for a second. I'll second, Dr. Gouy. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, uh, the parish owns two pieces of property. One houses the uh, Belchase Council Office or the old tomato shed, and the other piece of property is the uh, blue building that, where the annex is located. However, there's a piece of property in between those two uh, pieces that the parish does not own. And uh, we have been leasing that to make the property contiguous. And at present, it is used for parking. Uh, there's a secure area between the two. It's used for the judges, uh, fenced in, uh, limestone, and all of that. So uh, I'll ask for your support on this. Do we have any comment or question? Mr. Chairman, yeah. which contract goes with this? What's the amount of, of 6A8? Which one is that? Is that the 60 or is that the 12? Ask you for the amount, Leo. That's the 12,000. That's the 12,000. 12,000 dollars a month. The seven was 60. This one is for 12. Thank you, sir. Any other comment or question? Councilmember Griffin. Councilmember Hinckley. Councilmember Lapine. Yes. Councilmember Gooey. Yes. Councilmember Marinovich? Yes. Councilmember Burris? Yes. Councilmember Turner? No. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Okay. And the ordinance passes 7 0. I'm sorry, 7 1 1, with one abstention and one no. Who abstained? Okay, now what are we on here? Mr. Griffin. Mr. Griffin. Okay, under number seven, new business, we're showing uh, ZMP-2010-2. Dr. Gouy, you okay with this one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is 7-1-D. 7-D, map change, Elizabeth A. Grant Huckabee slash Dallas A. Piku Jr., Bellchase, Louisiana, from R1C, single-family residential zoning district to RM2, multiple-family residential zoning district. Dr. Gouy, you offering? This is, uh, this is under new business following the protocol for zoning change. Uh, Mr. Palazzo and Mr. Arteaga, if, if there's any questions as to our procedure on this, uh, I'm, I'll address them to you. But whenever there's a zoning change, we always have a public hearing. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, ordinance 
for approval of this zoning change was introduced today and will be voted on at a subsequent meeting. This allows for any member of the public to come up and make comments. We have none. We'll move on to the next one. Mr. Hinckley. Golf engine equipment. Okay. Uh, item number 7, 7E, ZV-2013-3, a zoning variance for Golf Engine Equipment Company Incorporated, 2306 Engineers Road in Belchase, varied from 40 to 32 front front yard requirement. Mr. Hinckley. I'd maybe just like to ask if there's anyone from uh, the company here today that would like to discuss it about. Your name and Good address. afternoon. I'm Barry Scariano. I'm the architect for the project, so I'm not with Gulf Engine uh, directly. But um, we did help uh, Mr. Palmazana put his application in and process it, and we presented it to the zoning board, which gave an unanimous approval. And I'm here to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? I don't believe there's going to be. Obviously, there were no issues with any of the, uh, the businesses adjacent to the. Uh, Obviously not, or the, the zoning board, it would have been brought up at that time, right? Uh, correct. When the, when the neighbors were notified, there was no objections. Nobody, no one showed up in opposition at the zoning board meeting. Okay, very good. Well, this, this, this was introduced, and this will be voted on at the next, next meeting. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hinckley. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I'd just like to make comments on uh, C. Okay, let's see. Hold on yeah. a second. We deferred it, but I want to make no, comments. Let me go through real quick. I'll get to it. Okay. 7A, Mr. Turner, Hurricane Isaac, do we have anything? Does anybody have any, any questions concerning it's Isaac? Public comments yeah. regarding Hurricane Isaac. Yeah. No, sir. Uh, 7B, anything for update presentation by District 6? Just a question on the, on the update for District 6. Um, Lake Hermitage Road, Mr. Lott, we had a conversation around that. And uh, can you give us an update? Tell us where we stand. I know when you first get on the road, very early on, right in the center, they've got some pretty deep holes right in the center. Um, I didn't make the complete drive. And so where do we stand with that? I spoke with uh, Mr. Bradford Brooks on the way to the council meeting this evening uh, to get with uh, the uh, superintendent of heavy equipment to make sure that one, one, somebody from either department will be on the tractor with the bionic plate to make sure that they grade the road for tomorrow for the weekend. So somebody will, you know, be doing the best they can with the piece of equipment that we have to do the work. Last uh, Wednesday, uh, we did put material on the road and graded the road um, the day before uh, July 4th. On Wednesday? Yes, sir. Did we, did we put any rocks to fill in the holes? Did, it, did we take care of the big potholes? Do you know? I believe they did, and uh, we also removed uh, some debris, some piles of debris, some tires, and uh, et cetera, from that location, uh, along with uh, uh, solid waste assisting us by hauling a lot of debris from uh, off that road. So we, we did work out there all day. I guess what I'd like for us to do is, we're not going to, if it's still going to be another two months before the grader comes in, um, because it looks like the work that's needed, I don't think the tractor is going to be able to do it. I think it's too light. I think it will actually need a grader because of the, the holes now. Your guys would know better than I would know, but we definitely can't continue the way we are, and especially with the rain, whatever rocks we put in there, all of that's going to get washed right out. And so if you can have somebody look at it tomorrow, if the weekend is coming up, you know, damaged vehicles, so whatever you can do, we'd appreciate it. Sure will. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Hold it, hold it, one second. Mr. Mr. Lawrence. <clears throat> yes, Warren Lawrence, 120 Timber Canal Lane, Myrtle Grove. Uh, while you're on District 6, I had a, a question and uh, I contacted Mr. Turner and I also contacted Mr. Mar Maranovich's office. In April of this year, you all passed an ordinance. Uh, ordinance was introduced by uh, Mr. Marinovich, as far as to the uh, purchase of some land for the pumping station at the Myrtle Grove area. And at the time, uh, I questioned it at the meeting and Mr. Marinovich deferred it because the drawing ahead at the meeting 
showed the discharge of that pumping station to go back into the Myrtle Grove Canal again. And at that time, there was no one from the administration to address it, so y'all deferred it for a month, uh, uh, two weeks. I was out of town the next two weeks when it came up, and it was voted in and passed, and it was passed with the stipulation that, and I think Mr. Turner questioned it, and Mr. Um, Rittner. Blair Rittner. Blair Rittner was here. I looked at it on television, and he assured that that pumping station would not discharge into the Myrtle Grove Canal. It would be located south into the pond and back of it, and y'all passed it based on that. That's correct. Thing. And then we were notified after that that was not true, that there was an error by Mr. Blair Rittner. And in fact, at our annual meeting, Mr. Nungesser said that Mr. Rittner spoke out of turn and that the station does discharge into the Myrtle Grove Canal. And Mr. Lawrence, give me one second, if you would. I talked to him a little bit last night because I wasn't able to meet with you this week. Had, believe me, my schedule killed me this week. Right. But um, I didn't quite understand all of what he told me last night. There's still some question about it. Um, because we still, they're still talking about some, some alignment on the levees, they're still talking about the gate, but this was a separate issue to me the way I understood it. And what I was told, what they, there's an issue when we have a south wind, that it's, that it's basically pushing the water back in and just recirculating and staying in the same spot. And I don't think they have anything set yet, they're working on it right now, but they don't have anything yet to rectify that issue. When they have that south wind, that that's gonna continue to occur. And I don't believe they've come up with a solution for it yet. Uh, and, and the only thing I'm questioning is that, is, you know, if an ordinance is passed and it's based on a decision, we naturally, the way it passed, we had no objection to it. But when it, after it's passed, then the whole solution says, no, that is not the way it's going to be. And I, I guess, you know, if the ordinance was passed and it says what Mr. Rittner said was right, we, I wouldn't be here today. Now, if it, if it is not right, then I think the ordinance was passed under false pretense that y'all understood that we were getting relieved of the discharge of the carbon and everything coming back into the subdivision. And if this is not gonna take place, then, you know, we're trying to get some answers to I understand. This. Mr. Well, Lawrence. I, I spoke to him last night, one second. If he, if he, I spoke to him last night, probably about 9, 9.30 last night. And he was attempting to explain some of it to me, but I still was gathering that there's not a full solution on this issue yet. And the biggest, the biggest problem seems to be when you have a south wind coming in, and he explained something about this tide getting over like 2.6 feet, that the water recirculates in, and it does not, and that's when you're having a problem. And they had, do not have a problem, do not have a solution for it yet. So I, I would suggest that we get together, Mr. Turner, Mr. Redner, and we can sit down and talk and see if we can okay. find a solution for it. No, we know we don't have a solution for the problem now. The solution was going to come if the new pumping station didn't discharge back into the canal. Mr. Turner even asked at the meeting on television, it stated, he said, why can't you just put the station on the back levee? Right. And, you know, he says, well, that's not the way the Corps designed it. And I don't know if the Corps is aware of our problem. Ms. I mean, Kim. Ms. Go ahead, Mr. Turner, I'm sorry. Ms. Kim, <clears throat> just put on the agenda to have Mr. Rittner uh, come and explain what's going on. These changes, I'm not aware of those changes. Well, you know, and so um, let's just put it on the agenda and we'll address it then. And okay. if it gets addressed before then, then we'll remove it. But as of right now, we'll have a discussion okay. with Mr. Blair and whoever the administration brings forward. Thanks for bringing it up, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Turner, you good? Hey. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Turner, you have something you want to mention about 7C, sir? Yes, sir. I just wanted to clarify why uh, 7C was deferred, because I know we have some residents here from the East Bank. Uh, 7C, which was supposed to have a public hearing on the courthouse project, well, on Tuesday, the administration issued a request for qualification. <clears throat> a uh, deadline for a uh, reception of the qualification for the new courthouse that will be built in Point Lahash is uh, August the 16th, I think. There was some confusion about the old courthouse project of 
what would the next step be? That confusion was solved today. The legal department and the firm, which is Providence, that have the under contract for the old courthouse project, they will be meeting at that site sometime in the next two weeks to finalize everything so that project can start moving. So as of right now, there's no need for us to have this public hearing because the administration has yielded to the demands that we have set forward. So now the projects are moving forward and uh, we just keep tab and see exactly and make sure everything is go accordingly. Virgie Ancalad, East Bank resident. Councilman Griffin, do you actually believe what you just said? Do you actually believe what you just said? It's not what he said. That's, it's what, that's what he said. I understand it, and I know, that's what I know how been, we feel. That's what he's been saying all along, okay? And we know the game plan. Well, it's a, different, it's a different thing, you know. I understand how you feel. But the paperwork for the Newport Courthouse Project, I've seen it. I've seen a copy of it. That did go out Tuesday. I've had three companies that's going to actually put or submit request for qualification call me yesterday and let me know that they have received their form so they can start putting together their package on a new courthouse project. And the thing that I was disturbed about because the confusion on the old courthouse project was the problem was is that the legal department and private and private was under confusion of what was actually supposed to take place for the renovation, demolition, and reservation of the old building. That has been solved today. So they're going to meet, they agreed to meet sometime in the next 10 days at the site. And from that, they'll finalize with the next step on. So what was his answer? Hmm? What was his answer when you asked him that question? No. Uh, what I'm saying is that the legal department, is Mr. Palazzo, met with the firm from Providence today to iron out the matter that was some confusion about that was done today. So they, they have agreed to meet down in Paula Hash at the old courthouse site sometime in the next two, two weeks to move forward with the next step to getting that project moving forward. Are you going to call a meeting on the East Bank? To, uh, I'll have a meeting on the East Bank once i finalize everything. No sense me talk, telling people one thing until I know exactly what I need to tell them. You're going to ask Mr. Nungesser to be present? Well, we could request Mr. Nungesser to be there, you know. Uh, but the thing you have to bear in the mind, it's not just Mr. Nungesser that's involved with it. You I already know that. Eight, it's, eight it's, other people. It's all folks that's sitting right you here. You what I'm saying? You got, eight uh -huh. other, you got eight other people sitting here that's involved. And looking at what I see, I mean, it's like, you know, I yeah. hope, you, I wish you would be sitting out here and see what I see. I hear you. But it's a new day. Joel Fedrick, 15. Dave Ant. Are there any plans to relocate the post office and the EMS trailer that's on this site? Wait a minute, that's not. We don't have that on the agenda right now. We can't address that right now. I mean, it's involving what you're talking about with the courthouse. We're talking about the courthouse. That's what's on the agenda. I mean, if you want to talk about that, you'd be more than welcome just to call one of our offices, especially Mr. Griffin's attorney's district, and we can add it to the agenda, but that's not germane to this subject. So we can't address the post office right now. Somebody reference to the EMS trailer in Portland Hacks? Uh, and the post office. But I'm, I'm not aware of anything with the post office besides that did decide to leave it there. But the EMS, I was told a couple of days ago, we have put that on the agenda to discuss it. Mr. Mr. Griffin, if I may. What was the timeline? You mentioned a meeting in a couple of weeks that administration is going to have. That with, I in the next two weeks. The administration is going to be having a meeting with? The administration and the contractor is going to meet at the Portland Hatch Courthouse to finalize the whole project status. Somewhere in there. And so they're going to be finalizing it or? What's going to, Mr. Palazzo, what's going to happen at that meeting? What's I'm hmm. not getting, I'm missing something. Well, the confusion, oh, when, when we did that resolution two weeks ago, resolution a couple of weeks ago, the confusion in that resolution is that 
the administration, and which is the, the engineer department, was under the impression that these two projects was one project. They're not one project. The old courthouse is one project. The new courthouse is a separate project. So that clarification has been handled. So now they know exactly how many projects. We have two projects. So now we're moving forward on both of those projects, and the other one's going to be finalized in the next 10 days. Are we good, Mr. Griffin? We're going to defer <laughs> items 8A and 8B. We did it already. We did. We did it already. We deferred seven out. I'll entertain a motion this time. Go ahead. We're going to defer back to introductions. In order to prove the plan of resubdivision of the property of Jan Williams, Flag and Trash Louisiana, as shown on map of resubdivision lots 3, 4, 38, and 31, 8, and 2 lots 38. Treasure Heights subdivision by Hugh McCurdy, the third PLS dated April 11, 2013. The owners have fulfilled all of the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemine without cost to the Plaquemine Parish government or the parish of Plaquemine. Is that all, Mr. Griffin? You got one, Mr. Yeah, also? Ordinance to amend the five year capital improvement plan for the Woodland Highway Bridge Road expansion project and otherwise provided with respect there too. Ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of the property of Elizabeth and Joseph Len Whirlin, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as shown on map of resubdivision lots 10 and 11, square one, into lot 10A, Fort St. Leon subdivision number three, Bell Chase, Louisiana, by Hugh McCurdy, the third PLS, dated April 29, 2013. The owners having fulfilled all of the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost to the Plaquemines Parish government or the parish of Plaquemines. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Hankley. We have no further business. I'll entertain a motion. Motion and chairman, Mr. Beer. Second by Ms. Lapine. Council member Griffin. Yes. Council member yes. Hankley. Council member Lapine. Yes. Council member Bowie. Yes. Council member Morinovich. Yes. Meeting is adjourned. I'd like to again call to order the meeting of the Plaquemines at um, 328. Machine is, well, roll call. Council Michigan. Member Griffin. Council Member Hinckley. Yes. Council Member Lapine. Here. Council Member Dewey. Here. Council Member Marinovich. Here. Here. Council Member Beer. Here. Council Member Can you give me one second to do this? Council Member Abscow. Would be appropriate or no? I will right now. All members are present. All members are present. I'd like to take the privilege of, of giving the um, giving the floor to Mr. Marinovich for a second before everyone. Well, you're not leaving now, obviously. I just have to. Uh, I wanted to mention Thursday, July 18th, from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, there's a replacement blood drive for Miss Carolyn Boone, the wife of Jeffrey Boone, who uh, recently was diagnosed with breast and bone cancer in April of 2013 and underwent a bilateral procedure in May of 2013. She's home, currently gaining strength uh, for the next round of treatment. She's very, very sick, but it seems like she's going to pull through this, hopefully. Uh, Ms. Carolyn has already been given platelets and units of blood, but more needed for the upcoming treatment. Family and friends are asking all healthy people who are at least 17 and weighing at least 110 pounds to donate blood. And again, this would be on the 18th from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. This would be at the, here at the Balchase Auditorium. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Gould. Thank you, sir. There is no executive session. Item 3, report by... Deputy Port Director. Uh, just a few items. Uh, on Sunday, uh, June 30th, the port responded to a, a fire at a deserted tank battery in Bayou DuPont, which is about three miles west of Point Lahash. We were successful in extinguishing the fire in the surrounding marsh area. On July Saturday, July 5th, the motor vessel, it was a small tug CPEC, sank in the Mississippi River right in the middle of the ship channel about three miles south of Venice. 
the port responded and with our Coda Octopus, which is a side scan sonar at the request of the Coast Guard. We scanned the river bottom for approximately 12 hours. We were not successful in locating the vessel. However, we went back out the next day and in company with the Corps of Engineers, Port Efforts, Coast Guard Efforts, we were capable of finding the vessel. The river was closed from approximately 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon until 6 p.m. Sunday afternoon. The vessel has since been removed from the channel and normal vessel traffic is restored again on the river. Uh, finally, on Wednesday the 10th of July, the port assisted Customs and Border Patrol, DEA, and the U.S. Coast Guard. We went out to the, in the Gulf, about 24 miles out, intercepted a ship, and the DEA and uh, Customs and Border Patrol did a dive on the ship, checking for parasitic parasites, i.e. drug traffic, uh, to my knowledge, none were found. And that's about the extent of my report. I would like to thank the council for their efforts in regards to interviews and et cetera for the search for our executive director. That is my report. Thank you, council members. Thank you, John. Any questions for Mr. Tennyson? Thank you. There are no bids and advertisements. Introduction of ordinances and resolutions, item five. Mr. Hensley, Ms. Philippine. John. I, <laughs> I, uh, I have a couple there. An ordinance authorizing the Plaquemines Port Auburn Terminal District to renew and enter into a lease agreement with Equiland Inc. to lease the property currently occupied by both the parish for ferry operations as well as the Port Authority vessels and operations. Situated in part of Section 9, Township 14, range 20, South Range 25, East, West of the Mississippi River, Plaquemines Parish, otherwise known as the Ferry Batch of Property and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance to adopt the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District 2013 original budget beginning January 1, 2013 and ending December 31st, 2013, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. A resolution authorizing and directing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District Chair, Port Chairman, to enter into an employment contract with Major General Maynard Sandy Sanders for services as Port Executive Director by signing the employment contract to enter into said contract for a term of three years authorizing and directing the board chairman to sign the documents to enter into the contract by close of business August 3rd, 2013, and otherwise to provide with respect there to Mr. Runovich, anything? I have none. Mr. Turner? I have none. None, sir. And Ms. Cooper? I have none. I actually have one for Mr. Edgecombe. It should have been introduced under the Okay. okay. An ordinance to amend and as amended readopt Plaquemines Parish Code of Ordinances, Section 2-18, Rules for Transaction of Business Before the Council is the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District. Chapter 1, Meetings of the Plaquemines Parish Council is the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District, Rule 1, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. And who introduced that? Item six, ordinances and resolutions on second reading and final passage. Item six A will be deferred. Under new business, I will need uh, I will need Mr. Griffin at the table. Mr. Griffin. And Mr. Hinkley. TV. Ms. Griffin. I'll ask for the suspension of the rules to take up an item not on the agenda. A resolution authorizing and directing the Plaquemines Parish Council as sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to call and schedule a closed meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Port Committee per authority granted by the Open Meetings Law for the following purposes. One, discussions of the character and professional competence of the applicant being considered for appointment as Port Executive Director of the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District 
and con two, confidential communications regarding financing options for the acquisition by the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District of certain properties in Plaquemines Parish and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I'll ask for a, uh, I'll offer and ask for a second. Second by Mr. Griffin. Um, the machine is open on the suspension only. Council Member Griffin? Yes. Council Member Hinckley? Yes. Council Member Lucini? Yes. Council Member Dooley? Yes. Council Member Marinovich? Yes. Council Member Burek? Yes. Council Member Turner? Yes. Council Member Edgecombe? Yes. Council Member Cooper? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I now would introduce the resolution. Um, a resolution authorizing and erecting the Plaquemines Parish Council as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to call and schedule a closed meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Port Committee per the authority granted by the Open Meetings Law for the following purposes. One, discussions of the character and professional competence of the applicant being considered for appointment as Port Executive Director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District. And two, confidential communications regarding financial options for the acquisition of the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District of certain properties in Plaquemines Parish and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I will so offer. I'll second. Seconded by Council Member Marinovich. The, the preamble of the resolution uh, uh, explains uh, the purpose of the resolution. Uh, there will be a meeting of the Plaquemines Port Committee on Tuesday, July 16th. 2013 at 4.30 at the Belchase Council Office uh, conference room. Uh, there will be two items on the agenda that are confidential in nature, and we uh, requested that, uh, we requested from our uh, port attorney to uh, determine whether or not we could meet uh, on these two issues uh, in a closed session because of the nature of the items. Um, I'll answer any questions from anyone regarding this and uh, any questions that I'm uncomfortable answering or don't know the answer, I'll defer to Mr. Ken Rathburn. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask that the meeting be on Wednesday. Uh, the reason I went along with the suspension was I'm on, my, I'm on my seven days on. So for this to happen on Tuesday, you know, there's no way that I can participate. So I've got seven days that I'm off. If we can schedule this time when I'm off, I would appreciate it. I, uh, I, Mr. Rathburn, my, my question is this. Can the port committee meet, the four members of the port committee meet, and have other council members attend? Is there any problem with the open meeting? Not if you're, not if you're going to have a closed meeting. Because okay. then you've got a quorum of council members. And you can't have that for the closed meeting. So they, he couldn't come. He could come to the to the to the regular meeting, but for for this for this subject matter, he could not. It would constitute a quorum, correct? For the for the, for the close right of the council, which is where we would have the issue. I did that research. I happened to answer. I didn't know it was Councilman Turner that might want to attend that, but I did. We did that research when we were trying to set up this closed meeting. Wait, I'm sorry. Um, what am I missing here? This meeting on Tuesday. There's an open. Ah, that's the committee. That's yeah, the port committee meeting. There's an open and a closed portion to it, and this resolution is for the closed portion of it to call for the closed portion. If, 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 if of the port committee. Wednesday, you can't Wait. attend the. But it's of the port committee. It's a port right. committee. Right. 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 No, but then it's still, but then it's still closed. The port committee. Okay. Yes. Right. All right. So changing the date won't do any good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Any other questions? Anyone? Machine is open. Council Member Griffin. Council Member Hinckley. Council Member Lapine. Yes. Council Member Gooey. Council Member Marinovich. Yes. Council Member Bierce. Yes. Council Member Turner. Yes. Council Member Edgeco. Yes. Council Member Cooper. Yes. And the resolution passes 9 0. Um, under new business, I'm going to uh, give the floor to Mr. Lapine, even though this is not port business. Uh, he asked me, and it's okay with me. But okay. Well, I, I've lost him. Where'd he go? Mr. Stevens. Right I'm sorry to see you. We would like to recognize you today for your birthday. 
Um, we have a cake for you. I don't know, do we have to sing you happy birthday or are you okay with that? Can we wave to you? We just would like to recognize you. Thank you for all your service for coming to all of me. And as you see, it's raining, so you can stay, everyone and have a piece of cake when we're done. Thank you, Mr. Terrell. Thank you, Mr. Lapine. Move to uh, item eight, approval of the minutes. A, April 11th, 2013, Ford meeting, and B, April 25th, 2013, Ford meeting. I'll offer, ask for a second. 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 Have a second for Mr. Marinovich. Roll call, please. Council Member Griffin? Yes. Council Member Hinckley? Yes. Council Member Lapine? Yes. Council Member Gooey? Yes. Council Member Marinovich? Yes. Council Member Buras? Yes. Council Member Turner? Yes. Council Member Edgecombe? Yes. And Council Member Cooper? And the minutes passed 9-0. Minutes are approved 9-0. Is there any other business to come before this Port Commission today? I'll entertain a motion. Motion adjourned. Motion. I second. All right, I'll give that to, yeah. to Council Member Griffin it's and open. to uh, seconded by Council Member Marinovich. Sheen is open. Council Member Griffin? Yes. Council Member Hinckley? Uh, yes. Council yes. Council Member Gilly? Yes. yes. Uh, Council Member Turner, Council Member Edgecombe, Council Member Cooper, Council Member Marinovich. Yes. And the meeting is adjourned at 3:42. Thank right, you all. Drive carefully. Come get a piece.